Next up, we have Manolis and Elias. Yay, they hardly need an introduction. <laughs> Um, Libra Space Foundation is in collaboration with the European Space Agency, developing a novel, versatile, open source CubeSat communication system. Manolis and Ilias will present the proposed architecture, the key components of the board, and some of their initial designs. Welcome. Thanks. So, uh, this is all about a new project called uh, Satnox uh, Coms. But I'm going to start with uh, some basic, very crude classification of uh, satellites and their systems. So, uh, power and com are like the two most important systems on satellites. And as you can see, if one of them fails, well, you are kind of not a satellite anymore. Um, so, how long would it take for uh, a mission, this is a question to you, to design and build a, a, com a comms uh, subsystem, uh, build a ground station, and uh, get to the point where you send the first hello world from the comms and you get it, like, in the next summer. So, months? Numbers, please, do, do say. Okay. So... If we had like a solution for a, a comms board where you would uh, set up a ground station, power it up, and uh, get telemetry, just like that. Now, would this time be kind of reduced? I think so. Um, so this is what this project uh, is about. Um, it uh, paves the path to actually go to such a solution using the Satnox network. So uh, you instantly have like lots of ground stations to, to use for your mission. And you have a, a comms uh, system where you have all the development, uh, the hardware development out of the way. And uh, you f focus on uh, customizing it, the software actually, to your needs, that would be the ultimate goal. So this is a, an uh, SRGSTP project. It is co-founded by Libre Space Foundation and we expect it to last uh, 12 to 14 months. Um, the goal is to actually go till uh, six or seven for a, a comm system that can fit on, uh, on a pocket cube, so the 10 by 10 centimeter. It's going to have uh, two radio interfaces, one for UHF and one for uh, S-Band. Uh, it's going to have like separate uh, power management for uh, these systems and uh, can be switched on and off on, on, on demand and uh, of course uh, have the, all the necessary protection so you don't uh, like cross the power bus. Uh, and logging because you need to know what's going on. Uh, there are going to be MCUs for controlling uh, the peripherals and uh, all the um, functions uh, necessary. And we're going to add an uh, FPGA to go for more uh, demanding applications. Um, on the ground segment, uh, we're going to try to define a, a telemetry format uh, template. So uh, instead of just uh, creating a new telemetry format where one mission goes like temperatures first and one mission goes like voltage first and all that stuff, there could be a template which would grade with, uh, with Satmo. So uh, you're going to get like a dashboard template where you get all your data. Uh, and the most important is we're going to try to add to Shatnox the transmission capability, which has some legal issues but and technical issues, of course, and uh, we're going to attempt to also do that. Uh, so this is like an overview of um, the entire project. So you will have the Shatnox comms, which will be in space, and have the MCUs and the radios there. And uh, this will communicate with the Satnox ground stations on the ground and uh, use the existing infrastructure and the uh, new infrastructure that is going to be developed um, to uh, get all the data and uh, actually provide an end result would be, would be like a dashboard 
what we've seen on the second slide. Uh, now Manuel is going to explain the technical stuff that he likes. Thank you, Elias. Uh, so yeah, as uh, this uh, yeah. as this is a RF component of your satellite, let's talk about uh, HRF characteristics. Uh, so because we are quite early on this project, actually it started one week uh, before one week. Uh, these uh, things are subject to changes, but uh, our goal is to reach uh, these numbers. So, as Ilya said, we have uh, two distinct uh, uh, RF interfaces. Uh, so, imagine yeah, that you can use them uh, as um, a contingency plan in order to have, uh, in order if one fails, to have the other one. Uh, but uh, the one will operate on the UHF amateur band with uh, uh, one watt of uh, transmission power. Uh, it uh, will support uh, four main uh, modulation schemes, uh, FSK, MSK, BPSK, and QPSK. And uh, the TX data rates will be up to uh, 90K, uh, whereas the uh, RX data rate will be up to 9K. So for the S-Band, uh, we are uh, still investigating the maximum transmission power there. So I cannot give you a number right, uh, right now. But uh, for sure, I can uh, tell you about the modulations. So in our, uh, uh, during all these uh, years in the Satnox uh, project, uh, we have uh, found ourselves uh, many times in problems receiving the data from um, uh, all the satellites that are orbiting right on out uh, the, the Earth. So we believe, and we uh, we believe that uh, standardization is the right way to go right now, uh, in order to be to uh, to use uh, networks like the Satnox, for example. So we will incorporate CCSDS and IEEE uh, standards. So mainly CCSDS. Uh, and uh, with uh, BPSK, QPSK, and uh, various uh, coding schemes like uh, convolution codes, uh, read Solomon, and uh, if we have enough uh, processing power, turbo, turbo, turbo and LDPC, sorry. Uh, for the data rates, uh, our plans is to reach the limit of uh, nine, uh, nine uh, k kilobits, uh, but of course it's it is an estimation, but uh, we believe that the, this is re uh, reachable. So, sorry. Yeah, uh, the most interesting characteristic of uh, our combs will be uh, that uh, will be equipped with uh, with SDR capabilities. So, Elias uh, previously told told us uh, that uh, we will have a, 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 an FPGA uh, on it. So. Uh, the resources are uh, the available resources of this FPGA are not uh, yet uh, uh, discussed, but uh, we believe that uh, it will have enough uh, space to do very interesting things. Uh, one of uh, th these interesting things is um, uh, cognition. Have you know? Have you ever heard about cognitive radios? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> so. Um, uh, what uh, what are, co are cognitive radios? Uh, cognitive radios are smart radios that uh, try to uh, to understand uh, the the spectrum that uh, they are operate, uh, measure the the, the spectrum uh, in terms of interference, and uh, if uh, the the spectrum is available, transmit uh, transmit data. Otherwise, do other stuff or uh, uh, sleep a while and uh, try it uh, again later. So we believe that uh, in the near future, especially in the S-band, uh, due to the high, high number of uh, new launches and uh, satellites up there, uh, we will reach a point that uh, the band will be overcrowded. Uh, so cognition will play a key role on this, uh, on this problem in order to uh, increase your uh, successful frame rate. Frame rate. So wh why transmitting if you know that uh, due to the interference this frame will fail, okay? So, in uh, the in the scope of this project, uh, we we will uh, deliver also in the FPGA reference code to doing uh, such things. 
So what about pricing? Okay, uh, our plan is to target uh, uh, a price of uh, 1,900 uh, euros for both uh, a flight model and an engineering model. So if you buy one, actually you get two. So we believe that uh, developers should, uh, uh, teams should um, not pay uh, so many, much money to, uh, to get uh, their flight model and then spend uh, another amount of money to for, for their engineering. Okay, so if you buy one, actually you get two and you can do uh, your tests and uh, whatever you like. So the difference between the flight model and um, the engineering model uh, will not uh, will not be much. Uh, so only in, uh, the, the engineering model will have additional uh, testing uh, pads for uh, probing uh, different uh, different spots of uh, your um, or of your board, and uh, of course some kind of extra UART uh, uh, outputs for debugging it and uh, so on. So that's all for me. I don't know if Elias has anything to add. Thank you. Okay. Just a comment as I move to the first question is that Satnox Cons will be is actually already open source hardware and software day zero. Like as we start, the repositories are already there, so you can follow all the progress. Hi, uh, thanks. Uh, I would like to know which family of FPGAs are you using? The family of the FPGA. Yeah, Mike. Oh. <coughs> test, test. Okay, so we have uh, already made an uh, investigation about uh, the capabilities of uh, different vendors of uh, FPGAs. So we have already played with, and Elias uh, was responsible for that, uh, with uh, EZ, Xilinx, and uh, Intel, Altera. Uh, so we believe that we can go with the EZ, which are uh, cheaper and uh, uh, also, the, the, the open tools that uh, they currently have can somehow provide, uh, um, can uh, fulfill our needs. But uh, of course, it's something that we should do in uh, the next uh, months. Do you already have an estimation on the power consumption it will have? Because when having FPGA and two transmitters sounds like yeah, yeah. 10 watts good, or good, so. Uh, very good question. Uh, actually, no, but uh, that's why we have a, a, a distinct uh, power management subsystem on it. So the idea is that uh, uh, the board will operate uh, with the main uh, RF front end, which is, will be the UHF and the MCU only. And then if you want to go to the S-Band, uh, then you activate uh, the, uh, the FPGA and the S-Band front end. So uh, mainly operate only with the UHF part, with which we have numbers for that because we, uh, we have implemented uh, the PQ, uh, uh, PQ9 is board. So uh, we will, uh, we will uh, borrow many uh, things that we have already implemented from there. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the FPG and uh, the S-Band, I cannot say, if I cannot give you numbers right now, but of course uh, they will be switchable and uh, you can uh, enable and disable them on demand. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I would like to ask if, there, uh, if you're planning to install any analog filters on uh, the boards. So you mean uh, f to to uh, to filter out uh, the UHF and uh, S band? Uh, like band pass filters uh, for these two bands? Yeah, especially on the S band, uh, there are some regulatory issues. So in order to get qualified and uh, pass uh, the um, uh, and pass all the restrictions uh, issues, you have to be sure that uh, you will not. Uh, uh, generating interference in other, other in other spectrum users, so yeah, there for sure we'll have some uh, bandpass filtering 
in, fro in the RF front end. And uh, for the UHF, uh, yeah, we already have, uh, well, and for the UHF, we already have them. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank. Thank you.